Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over some networking basics of Docker Compose. For example, let's say you have a Compose project and you've got a web app as well as a database. So if your database was named DB, let's say that you're using something like Postgres, isn't it pretty cool that from your web app, you can actually just connect to the DB DNS name here on whatever port that you want and things just work. So in this video, we're gonna unwind how that works by Docker Compose creating a Docker network for us. We're gonna go over IP addresses and gateways and DNS names and aliases, creating custom aliases and things like that. And by the way, this is going to be a basics of networking with Docker Compose video, but we're not gonna cover things like expose versus publish or using docker.host.internal for your containers to connect back to your host. I've actually done videos about that in the past. I'll leave links to cards for that. By the way, speaking of links and cards and descriptions and stuff, you know, there is going to be a blog post for this video as well. I'll leave a link to that one. That's gonna have all the different code examples and commands that we run. So don't feel like you need to pause the video to follow along and copy stuff manually. So in this case here, we just have a Docker Compose file set up here. And there's two different Different services A and B. Both of these are HTTP servers. Basically, it's an echo service that will just return back the string that we supply here. It listens on 5678 by default. That's why the first one doesn't have it. You know, this is created by HashiCorp. And then also we have a third container here on the network, HTTP client. This is just running curl here. You know, it sleeps for infinity because it's really not running anything. I just wanted to keep the container running so I can just exec into it and run some commands here. You know, alternatively, we could have just did a Docker Compose run, not keep it running, and things will work the same. I also decided to set the name here uh, to a example. Normally, I would not set this name in here. I'd usually use an environment variable for that one. Also, if I take a look here at the help menu for compose, then uh, yeah, this, you know, that's the project name essentially here. And what's neat about this one is, you know, if you decide to follow along as well, then the resources that are created are going to be namespaced as example. So it's the same for you as the same for me. That's going to make sense when we start, you know, inspecting some containers by name. If we didn't put the name here, then it's going to use your directory by default to prefix things like that. I just wanted to keep it consistent for the sake of the video. Also, just a little quality of life thing. You know, the stop grace period is normally set to 10 seconds by default with Compose. You know, if a container takes longer than uh, 10 seconds, it's gonna send a SIG kill. In this case, I just brought that down to one second here. If you're gonna be upping and downing things pretty frequently, it's a little time saver here. You know, it doesn't always wait 10 seconds, but if this container takes like, I don't know, let's say four seconds to go away, then yeah, it going away in one second is a little bit quicker. So with that said, let's do a Compose up here and just see what gets created, what's happening here. You know, if this is the first time you're ever pulling down these images, it may take a second or two to pull them. I've already pulled them off here. But yeah, you can see that both of these services are running on their ports here. So let's demonstrate, you know, the end game, etc., where we're kind of going to exec into this uh, HTTP container that is running here at the client, and then just make a curl request to both of these and see what, they, what we get. So we can do a Docker Compose exec here. We're going to exec into the HTTP client. We're going to run the curl command here, because again, this is the curl image. Curl is going to be available to run. And then we can just curl whatever, you know, host name that we want here, or IP address, whatever we want. So in this case, we're going to curl service A, which is this one, that's listening on 5678 by default. That's why this all works. We can see hello from A. There's our text. And then let's do the same thing for B. And B is going to be on a different port, so let's modify that one. And then we can see, cool, we actually get hello from A and hello from B. This demonstrates that, you know, since all three of these containers are on the same network, they're able to talk to each other over these nice little DNS aliases that Docker Compose created for us. And uh, that is pretty nice. So with that said, let's talk a little bit more about Docker networks and how all of this even got to working through Docker Compose. For example, when I ran this Compose up command a second ago, we can see that Docker Compose actually created a network for us before it started all these containers here. Now let's go and maybe inspect that network. So we can do Docker network. By the way, I'm just going to run an LS here in grep, for example. I've got other networks created. They're not private, like I don't wanna not show them on video, but they're gonna be a dis distraction, so I'm gonna grep them out. So we just see example here. You know, in your case, you don't need to include the grep example if you don't want. You know, the ID for your network is probably gonna be different, but that is the network there. So let's inspect it and go and check it out. So we can do uh, Docker network inspect and then the name of the network or the ID in this case let's just go with uh, the easier name and then there we can see all sorts of different details about this network you know there's the ID there's its name it's a bridge network um, you can see it also belongs to a specific subnet you know this number is probably going to be different for you it may actually be the same out of coincidence but yeah you know let's say that you have a whole bunch of different docker compose projects on your machine you know they're all going to be in different subnets that's how you get some isolation between the different networks that you have here but since we're dealing with one network here you can also see that there's many containers in this network well there's three of them right the three that we include in our Docker Compose file. You know, there's service B, 
you know, there's the HTTP client and there is service A. And when it comes down to these values here, you know, the key here is going to be the ID of the container. You can see they're different for each one. We also have a name, which is going to be an accessible DNS name for these as well. We're going to check that in a second, but you can see it's different for each one. You know, there's also the IP address. So each container here on the network has its own IP address too. So let's demonstrate some of this here, how we can actually connect to this container in a couple of different ways. So, you know, the most basic case, what we did a second ago here was just connect to it from the alias that Docker Compose created for us. But we can also do, you know, example A1, and then we can also do example B, and then on the other port here, that's going to work, which is pretty nice. We can also go back up to here and find the one for A. You know, this IP address is going to be this, so we can connect to this instead, and hopefully this will work as well. There we go, and then we can see hello from A. So that's three different ways we were able to connect to that container right now, through the IP address, through this DNS name here, and then also through the alias that Docker Compose created for us. There's actually gonna be other ways we can connect to it too. We don't need to go back if we don't want to, but B is gonna work the same. B is gonna have a different IP address, but let's just show it on a video because why not? We can go to three and then nine, and then we see hello from B. Everything is nice here. Okay, so let's see if there's other ways we can connect to things as well. So, you know, if we actually take a look here at the Etsy hosts file for, let's say, the HTTP client here, and we just cat out Etsy hosts, then this is also going to include uh, the container um, ID here as well. You can see it starts with F389 with an IP, IP address of two for the HTTP client. So F389, let's go back up to our output here. And let's look for F389, there it is, and we can see the IP address ends with two for the HTTP client. Now, funny enough, uh, the cat utility actually doesn't exist inside of the other um, A and B ones, so we can't just cat that out, but there are other ways to see what's available to connect to these services by actually inspecting the container itself. So, you know, we just ran this command here before to uh, inspect the actual network, but yeah, let's actually inspect the container itself. So we can do this in a couple of different ways. You know, we can pop in the ID, but uh, yeah, let's just do a Docker container LS and we're gonna grep for example. This is, you know, many different ways to get these names here. But yeah, in this case here, you could see the names are this, or we can use the, the actual ID itself. But yeah, in this case, let's do, um, instead of LS, we're gonna do inspect. And then let's inspect, I don't know, example A1, right? We'll go by name. That's why it's nice to have the example name to be consistent if you're following along. So here, if we inspect this, then, you know, there's gonna be uh, a ton of output here, all sorts of different things, but there is going to be a networking section down here somewhere. And as soon as I find that, we'll go over, yeah, some of the network settings here. You know, you can see it belongs to uh, all sorts of different things here. There's a network. And yeah, we can see this network ID that actually lines up to the network, the example default network we just inspected before. We could also see the IP address here, but we can also see the DNS name. So in this case here, you know, we couldn't we, we couldn't just cat out Etsy host, but that DNS name is here for us to connect to. So let me just go back to here. And I think this was A, right? Yeah, so if we go back to here, then we would expect to be able to connect to this over five, six, seven, eight. And then we could do the same thing for B. I'll spare you the time, but it's the same thing. But yeah, when we go back to here, what's pretty interesting though is, yeah, we have all these different DNS names, right? The long DNS name here that was created within the Docker network. We have this, which is an alias created by Docker Compose for us as well. And then we also have the Etsy host file entry that is available in the container, even though we couldn't actually cut it out to see it. So DNS names here, you know, this is a list and this is basically a combination of, you know, this container ID that's from Etsy host, as well as whatever aliases that were created through any other situations here. In this case, Docker Compose set up these aliases for us. And then yeah, the DNS names are all that stuff combined. And any one of these DNS names on the list, you are available to connect to, which is pretty helpful here. And, you know, let's say though, maybe maybe you actually want to connect to a different name that is not the service name. Maybe you want to have your own custom uh, alias set up. You can totally do that. So let's go back to here. And, you know, these aliases are actually scoped to a specific network. They're not scoped to like, you can't just put like an, an alias like this, you know, on the actual service. So let's go to, you know, you have to type in network, it's object basically. And then, uh, yeah, you have to put in the name of the network. Again, if you had a custom network, you know, you wouldn't put default here, but since we're dealing with the default, network, then we can just use default here and then aliases and then uh, actually aliases, I'm pretty sure, then it is going to be just a list of things. So I don't know, maybe in this case, let's call this one Apple. Um, there we go. Okay. So now could we actually just, is life that easy? Can we just go and curl Apple instead of A? Will that work? I don't know. Let's see. Nope, not going to work. Why? Because of course we need to restart our project. So I'm going to kill that and then up it and then uh, this should work. There we go. It's listening and we got that.
So now the container ID is going to change, but if we go and inspect this other container by name, you know, it doesn't matter that the ID changed for the container. But yeah, we can see here that we have this extra alias that was created, Apple for us. You can see it's now part of DNS names as well. So yeah, it's pretty cool that we're able to get our ability to create custom aliases if you have a use case that you want to do for something like that. There is one other thing I just want to go over before wrapping this one up, and that comes down to things like this gateway address that we're looking at here. And uh, what's pretty interesting is you could actually ping this gateway address, this, this one here, from any one of the containers on the network. So if we go back to here, let's go and just run ping, because ping actually is available in this curl image, which is actually quite nice. So this is 172.2701. Uh, we can ping that from this one. And uh, I don't think ping is available for the other ones, but whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But yeah, this gateway is pingable by all of them. And, you know, in the past, I had these weird uh, networking situations set up where you can actually do this where, and I wouldn't suggest doing this, but like it could be done, where uh, you can actually curl the gateway on whatever ports are available for the services that you have here. So this is actually not going to work because things aren't set up for that to work because it's a pretty subtle reason on why that actually works. So let's uh, make a little tweak here to our compose file to demonstrate how that could work. So if you actually publish this port to all interfaces, so 5678, um, this would not work if you just scope this to localhost, by the way, like 127. I'll just show you the syntax in case you've never seen that. But yeah, you can scope, you know, publishing a port to specifically localhost, which is a great idea. Um, if you had something like a web application running in a container, but like Nginx is running on your Docker host, but you only want this thing to be published to uh, localhost so Nginx can access to it, or maybe you have a database server, et cetera, you know, uh, that's what I would typically do. But in this case, we're going to bind it to all interfaces, which is basically the same as 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. Um, but in any case here, let's restart stuff. And let's just do it to the other one. Well, let's keep the other one uh, untouched for now. But if we do this, then we can actually curl port 5678 from the gateway, and that is going to work. But the way this works is it's actually reaching back through to the Docker host, and then the Docker host is forwarding that over to the container. So, you know, this isn't uh, really a good way to connect. You know, you might as well just connect straight up to the actual, uh, you know, service name that you have here, um, in this case like this, right? You don't want to go through the Docker host to be able to do that. Um, but with that said, yeah, that's basically the basics TLDR networking with Docker Compose. You know, if you actually wanted to clean up this project after following along or whatever, you know, instead of running a Docker Compose stop or control C, you can also run a Docker Compose down. That's going to get rid of all the stop containers and also get rid of the network too. So now if we actually did, you know, a Docker network uh, LS here, and we grab example, then example is not going to be there because that network was cleaned up. And the next time that you start the project here, then yeah, it's just going to recreate that network for us, do all the things. So actually maybe one last thing before we wrap up here, you know, if I just control C this one and then we up it again, it's not gonna recreate the network because the network never got deleted when you hit control C. So with that said, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.